Hey, what's up guys? It is Dan from Connect Church in Calgary, Alberta. I've had a few people reach out to me asking us how we are doing our multi-camera recording for our online church services. As I record this, we are in the middle of the COVID-19 outbreak. It's forced churches all over the world to move their services completely online. And uh, we're all kind of watching each other and saying, hey, how are you doing what you're doing? Because we've never really had to do this before. And so I've had a few people that have asked me specifically how we're doing ours. So I figured I'd make a quick tutorial to get you up to speed on how to do multi-camera editing in your living room and uh, also using Premiere Pro. Now, if you're not a church pastor, you're not putting church services online, that's okay. I still think you might find this helpful. Let me start out by saying that um, one of the things you need to recognize is that um, the priority in your recording shouldn't be video, lights, and audio. I think that's the way most of us think about it. We want to have a great camera with a gorgeous image. We need the good lighting to make that happen so we don't look like trolls, you know, on screen. And then audio almost becomes an afterthought. But in reality, if you want to have a great online production that people will stick around and watch for 20, 30, or even 60 minutes, you're going to need to focus on your audio first and foremost, then worry about your lighting and your video after that. What this means is you're going to need to record separate audio from your video. Each of your video cameras is going to have a microphone that you can use, but um, you don't want to use the audio input from each one of your cameras. Instead, you want to record to some sort of separate audio source or uh, rather audio destination. And, and so the way you can do that is, is simply to take like a microphone and to record into your laptop. You probably have an old SM58 microphone laying around. You know, every church has a hundred of those. Pull one out of your trailer or off your stage. Uh, buy a couple cables off of Amazon that will get it all the way down to an eighth inch or a headphone in adapter. And then plug that straight into your laptop. Hit record on QuickTime or whatever other program you want to use. And you will have high quality audio that we can sync up to the video later. Now, if you don't have that particular setup, there are other ways you can do it. You can find some lavalier mics that you can plug into your iPhone and use a voice memo. There are a bunch of different ways to do it, but you need to figure out some way to record standalone or separate audio that's going to be much more high quality than what you would get if you were simply relying on the uh, microphones from your particular phones or video cameras or anything like that. So let's dive in here to uh, Premiere Pro. I'm going to pull it up on the screen. And uh, if you don't really know a whole lot about the program, I, I might give you a brief overview of some of the windows here. But, you know, you can always YouTube some other videos. So if you want to import some multicam footage, what we're, you're going to do is get all of your camera footage in one particular folder. So here I've got it in multicam tutorial. And what you're going to see is that I've filmed a, a prayer segment that my wife did for our online service. And we filmed it with three different camera angles. Plus, I have my audio file that I recorded independently of each of these uh, uh, cameras. So we're going to um, select all of these. We're going to import them here into the bin. Once they get imported on my slow computer, there we go. Um, you, what we're going to do is we're going to take these out of the bin and we're going to drag them onto the timeline. So you might think about starting with whichever camera is your kind of the base shot that you want to use. So I have a Sony a6600 here that we could use. I've got uh, an a7 III that was kind of a side or oblique shot. And then we've got an iPhone that somebody was holding and filming uh, this segment with. So we're going to start with this wide establishing shot. We're going to drag it over over here to the timeline, just drag and drop, and it's going to put it here at the kind of zero mark like you would expect. But actually, we're going to pull it over a few seconds and give us some space to work with syncing all of our files in just a moment. You'll find out um, when you're working with Premiere that you don't have to have your video files all the way over here uh, at the zero, zero mark. If you want to put it way down here, that's fine. Just find your endpoint, hit I on your keyboard, and when you go to render, it's going to ignore all of this, and it's just going to start rendering from this point. So let's get rid of that. Um, so we've got our first bit of footage here, and what you're going to see when you drop it into the timeline is you have these V channels. V stands for video. Then then you have these A channels. A, of course, stands for audio. So we dropped our first shot into video channel one, and correspondingly, it gave us the audio from channel number two, or uh, I'm sorry, into audio channel number one. 
So we'll do the same thing here with these other shots. I can drag them in. We can kind of line them up. I'll put it in channel two. You'll see the audio automatically goes to uh, audio two. And then we'll do the same thing here with the iPhone footage as well. Okay. Um, one final thing. We want to make sure that, uh, well, let me back up. If I were to just hit play right now, it's going to sound disgusting. Okay, so you notice there, you're hearing uh, all of the audio channels at once. That's not good. And none of them are synced to the actual video itself. So those are all problems we're going to fix here in just a moment. We're going to start by muting each one of the channels. Because remember, I told you we weren't going to be using the audio from the cameras, which sounds like garbage. Instead, we're going to use this high quality audio file. So we're going to grab this. We're going to drag it down here. You might notice there aren't uh, any extra channels for it down here. But if you just put it at the bottom, it'll automatically create audio channel four. That's good. You'll notice also it does not create a video channel four, and that's a good thing because it's smart enough to recognize that this is just an audio file only. Okay, so now if we hit play, we're going to see uh, the audio sounds much better. Our biggest need right now is faith. So much better than uh, this one was. Uh, nope, we're not hearing that one. Anyway, it's much better than these other files here. Fear. Yeah, you hear that? Ugh, sounds terrible. Okay, this, of course, is much better. Earth, yeah, so that's why we do the separate audio recording. Okay, now, one thing you'll probably notice is that the audio is not synced up to the video. So her mouth is moving, but those are not the words she's saying. So we want to edit or sync up all of our footage together. And this applies whether or not you're doing a single camera angle or you're doing multiple camera angles, okay? One of the things that you've probably seen in movies is somebody doing that little clicky clacker late thing, right? Where they do the, you know, scene four, take one, ready, and they clap, okay? Um, the reason they do that is because when you're syncing video files together with an external audio source, you can make it really, really, really simple by doing that clap because it creates this nice little waveform. This is the audio waveform here of the clap on each of the different tracks. And that is much easier to sync together than trying to match up video frames and things like that. So when you're syncing your video files to an external audio source, you're actually going to ignore the video altogether. We could get rid of all of this if we wanted to and just focus here on these. So what what we're going to do is this is the clap on the um, major or the main audio file and so we want to sync everything to that so let's say we just kind of drag this over here we get it close uh, to our timeline and where we want it to be. Let's just put it like right there. That's fine. Okay, zoom in a little bit further here. And uh, we want to sync all of this up to basically this point right here. So we can click the next one. This is the clap on that uh, waveform. And we can drag it over if we want to, or on a Mac at least, you can hit Command and left or right arrow, and you can move it over by one frame. So we're going to do that until it gets right in line. We'll do it with the next one over, 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 over clap syncing actually you know what if we back up here I think this is gonna be the clap over here so we will yeah it is so we want to move that over so we get it in line one back one there we go and one final one we do the same thing okay now what we're going to see here is that everything is lined up. You'll see like they're not perfectly in line. This one's a little bit further ahead. There are ways you can do a, a more fine adjustment to it. But in reality, it's close enough that your, your ears and your eyes are not going to be able to see a difference. So if we turn these back on and we hit play, you should be able to see that everything is synced up pretty nicely now. There we go. Looking good. Okay. Uh, if we let my wife talk a little bit, you should see everything's in line. We're going to move into our time of prayer. Yeah. And I want to read this. All right. So now our audio is all synced up nicely, which is great. That's exactly what we want to have happen. Um, one of the things that I notice with the video files here is that um, <clears throat> I've got these two cameras. So we have uh, here we're looking at a shot from a uh, Sony a7 III, and then here we're looking at a shot from a Sony a6600, and on top we have an iPhone shot. Now, the Sony cameras look almost exactly alike. 
Okay. Um, if you look at them, basically the color correction, the, you know, the, everything about it looks exactly the same. And that's because both cameras are the same brand. They're both Sony, uh, Sony's. So the sensor handles the, uh, the color data and, you know, the video and all that stuff the exact same way. But when we look at the iPhone footage, it doesn't look the same. And it's not simply because the iPhone has a smaller sensor or anything like that. It actually processes the video data differently. And so what we want to do is we want to adjust the look and feel or the color correction of this particular video file so that it matches or it better matches these other two. Now, I'm not going to do a lot of work on this, but I'm just going to give you a rough sense of how it might work. So. One of the things I notice here is that this iPhone shot is very saturated in comparison to these Sony shots. These, sh these Sony shots are really like soft and creamy and desaturated, and that's kind of the same look that I want for this one. So I'll come over here to our uh, color correction panel. We can work in the basic correction and we can just drag down the saturation a little bit. And you can see already just by dropping at 5%, there's a pretty massive difference. That was 100, that's five. Um, you can go you know, real far with it. We don't wanna do that. So probably somewhere in that neighborhood is pretty close. If we go back and toggle the visibility and start looking between the two, okay, yeah, that's the skin tones at least look to be about saturated at the same level. Now, this particular image is more red than this one is. It's a, This one's a little bit bluer and slightly yellower than this one, um, or rather uh, slightly more greenish. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the temperature just a tiny bit. Um, we're going to drag this down some. It you know, it's it's kind of just eyeballing it. You're getting a sense of like, okay, do they look about right? So if we went there, that's eh, too much. If we went uh, here, let's try that. They're better, certainly better than it used to be. Let's say that I'm happy with that or I fiddle with it and I get it to where I want it to be. After I've done the actual color correction uh, to the different camera shots, it's time to edit them in the multi-cam setting here in Premiere Pro. And let me tell you guys, this is abso freaking loot magic. I used to think this was gonna be so incredibly difficult that I didn't even attempt it, but the reality is Premiere Pro makes this so easy that uh, you're gonna love doing it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna select all of our video files by clicking and holding shift on each one. And you're gonna see it chooses the video files and it selects the audio, but it leaves unselected the master audio track. That is a good thing, that's what we want. So now we're gonna right click or control click. We're gonna come up to the menu option that says nest and click that, name it whatever the heck you want. It'll turn into a green single channel video line here that says nested sequence, whatever you named it as. We're gonna right click on it one more time. We're gonna come up to multi-camera and enable and watch the magic that's about to happen, you guys. After we do that, you're going to see it says MC here. That means multi-camera, and it happens to be on shot number one, the wide establishing video channel one shot that we set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the uh, toolbar. We're going to click this little button that says toggle multi-camera view. If you don't have this already on your toolbar, all you have to do is hit the plus sign and then you'll find it right here. The icon, you can just drag it down onto the toolbar. So when we click this, watch what happens. We now see the output screen that we're looking at, but in real time, we can monitor all three other channels of video that we have. So if I hit play, just watch how cool this is. First with you, Matthew 11, we see the output shot, but we can also see this oblique angle, the handheld iPhone shot, all of it at the same time. And the cool thing about editing all of this is that when you kick off, all you have to do is watch this in real time. Just hit play and let it scroll through. This is about a seven or eight minute clip. We could let it scroll through. And as we're watching, we can make clips or cuts rather uh, to different camera angles in real time. So if we're starting here and then I wanna move over to this shot, whenever I'm at the point in the timeline that I wanna make that angle cut, I just click this particular screen up here in the panel, or I can hit one for camera one, two for camera two, or three for camera three. And that's it. It's so easy. So let me let me just play through a short section of this and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. You, Matthew 11, All right. So my wife's starting here. I'm going to let her go. And are heavy laden, and I will give 
That's right, Amber. Good word. Yes, girl. Tell them. Now, if we want to switch over to camera number two, we just click number two. And there we go. We want to jump over to the handheld iPhone shot. We can hit number three or click. Let that roll as long as we want to. But not in ourselves. Not in the earth. Shot number one. Universe, but in the savior of the world who says, I am the way, Okay, we're going to stop this, and I want you to watch what happens to this green multi-camera line here. You're going to see that there are several different cuts or splices now within the uh, within this particular video channel. And if we zoom in, you'll see it actually tells you which camera angle you're using at any given point. So this is multicam one, this is two, three is here, and then we went back to one. So it's actually in real time cutting to these different angles. And if you let it play, now it's just going to do it all automatically just like professionals do it you guys it's so so simple now um, let's say that after you've done that um, what I'll do actually is I, I'll go through and I'll watch this entire video I'll make rough cuts so I'll say oh I think at this point we should shift to this angle and at this point we should move to camera three and I'll make rough cuts but as I go back through and I watch it often I'll realize ah you know these cuts are not exactly in the right places I, I wish I would have made them a little bit differently there are a few different ways that you can do that so let's say if you're watching through and you're like you know what uh, when we were at camera one and we went to camera two I actually wish we would have went to camera three instead it's super simple all you have to do is select the video clip here, choose camera number three, and you're going to see that changes to MC3. And so now that cut that it makes is just going to go straight to number three. So that's pretty simple. Uh, let's say that uh, you are in the middle of a clip that you have and you're like, oh, you know, I don't want it to sit on this iPhone shot for too long. It, it moves too much or the quality is not as good. I really wish we would have jumped to camera number two at this point. It's pretty simple. All you want to do is come over here and grab your razor tool or you're going to use the keyboard shortcut C. So we'll click that and uh, you can come right here, highlight the clip that you want to cut or the moment at which you want to change camera angles. Just uh, as you hover over it, it's going to turn into a white razor. Click with your mouse and boom, now you have two separate clips. So if we choose the move tool or the select tool, we can choose this angle now and we're just going to hit two on the keyboard and that's going to give us this shot. So now what happens is we have the... Uh, handheld iPhone shot and halfway through it moves over to that number two shot and then you can go through and adjust these however you want all the way through you can make for a really really nice polished professional uh, looking multicam shoot now you might notice as you're uh, watching through the rough cuts that you've made that you don't really like where some of the cuts land uh, you want to adjust it earlier or later all you're gonna do is use something called the rolling cut tool and I don't have it here on my toolbar because I just memorized the shortcut a long time ago so we're gonna choose N on the keyboard N so once you hit N, you get this little um, back and forth arrow, and currently it has you know the the slash the Ghostbusters slash through it. Um, but if you hover over your your uh, your cuts here, you're going to see that you're able to use it. Okay, so now if this cut happens when my wife says lowly in heart okay so like let's say right here i don't know why i just don't like that face my wife is making it just looks funny it's distracting she looks upset or like her tummy is upset so what we're going to do is we're going to use the rolling cut tool and we're just going to grab this little splice and we're going to go later in the timeline with it until we get past that weird little face that she makes and what this does is it tells the timeline to stay on multicam one longer before it switches to multicam two so watch this now see there's that face that we we're trying to avoid but we miss it when we cut here and so it changes when the cuts are happening you can make it happen way earlier you can make it happen way later it is so so easy and it allows you to fine-tune when your cuts are happening and make them really really sweet and smooth looking okay Okay, one final thing you can do when using multicam editing techniques is when somebody makes a big screw up. I've got a, a separate segment here that we film for our online service. This is Kim. She is uh, giving our announcements for the service. And uh, you'll watch here, she makes a mistake in her take. In your living room so you can be at church in your PJs.
Remember church isn't a... Nope, screwed it up, Kim. Remember that church isn't a building, it's a... Okay, so this take she gets right. You see here, um, this point is correct. This point, though, is not correct, and we want to get rid of that. So it's really, really simple to do. I've already marked kind of where I think it should happen. Um, we're going to put our, our cursor here wherever we want to make the cut. We're going to come back over here and grab the razor tool or hit C on the keyboard. And then this time, when we go to hover over the video channel, we're actually going to hold down the shift key. And you'll see it gives us this long bar because what it's going to do is it's going to clip the, it's going to clip all the channels at exactly the same point, both the video and the audio channel. So you see everything now has been cut. That's a good thing. We want that to happen. We'll come down here to the next marker I've already set up. We're going to shift and click and cut it all out. And then uh, we grab our selection tool or V on the keyboard. We're going to highlight this part that we want to get rid of. You could just hit delete, but what will happen is you're left with this big empty space. And if you were to actually try to render this out, you would have black on your screen for those seconds. And that's obviously not what you want. You could then highlight this and drag it over, but there's a much easier way to do it. We're going to undo that, um, that delete that we just made. We're going to select the part we want to get rid of. Then we'll right click or control click and then go to ripple delete. Ripple delete gets rid of the selected clip. And then everything that's later in the timeline automatically gets zipped up so that there's no gaps at all. So now I think what you're going to see is that this will look fit. It'll look decent. Let's see. Remember that church isn't a building. Okay. So we got rid of her screw up, but you notice right here, there's a jump. You can tell that this is an ugly cut. So we can disguise that by using a separate camera angle. This is going to be perfect. So watch her now. Remember that church isn't a building, it's a people. Nice. You can't even tell that she screwed up there anymore. There's probably some more tweaking we can do with the audio. You can hear it jump a little bit right there. Remember that but that's okay. We can fix that really easily. And so you're seeing how using these multicam angles can hide these cuts that you have to make. So if somebody is, you know, they're giving a talk, if you're preaching and laying down the fire, and then you screw up 10 minutes into the sermon, you don't have to stop, go all the way back to the top and do it in a big long take. You can, you know, pause, go back to the top of the last section or point that you were on, and then use the the uh, edits and the multicam angles so that nobody even knows that you screwed up. All right. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful to you. If you if you guys have questions about any of this or I didn't explain something well enough, please feel free to drop a comment in there and uh, I'll do my best to answer you.